so, so that, that's another relationship of, of writing to the model. And then, so, so then the, the issue of the studio is something um, where all these things uh, 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 become uh, played out. Again, I'm so interested in that every person's um, uh, presentation today involved the studio in, in, in very direct ways and indirect ways. But, but it, it seems to be something that is insistent. Um, and, it, and it's something that's really under threat in art schools at the moment. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's very interesting, and in, it's a particular problem, I'd say, within painting as well. And, and to, to think about one's relationship to the studio and what the, the studio might be, uh, what it is. Um, uh, not just as a physical space, but as a, a space of thought. Um, and um, so anyway, w one of the, the figures I was writing about in the PhD was uh, Melnikov, Konstantin Melnikov, who um, built for himself a, a kind of a, a, a really uh, uh, an idealized uh, house, um, he, uh, uh, which was a, a studio house. It's called Cylindrical House Studio. It's in the middle of Moscow. It was built at the time of when mass collectivization was really taking off. So how he got to build this house is kind of extraordinary. And, and it, it's something to do with the fact that he's an international architect and, and could do so. Um, uh, you know, he's internationally recognized. But he was never part of uh, the, con the constructivist um, um, movement, the avant-garde movement. He was more esoteric than that. But at the same time, he fell foul of the, the Stalinist uh, um, um, uh, supported architectural groups. And so by 19, he, he built this house in 1929. By 1933, he lost his license as an architect. And this is a, a house that, that, that is um, a series of interlocking circles uh, that synthesize an idea of living and dwelling and thinking. So it, it's a kind of a, 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 it's a, it's a perfect uh, uh, relationship to, of thought to making um, and a kind of a Heideggerian uh, 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 sense. And, and you know, it, it's, it, it has at its root the idea of the hearth so it's such an extraordinary romantic uh, building. But what do you do when um, you can't work, when you can't practice as an architect any longer, and you're left in this house? And he, he lived in his house until 1972. So from 1933 to 1972, what does he do? He turns to painting, uh, which is, uh, in a sense, the most hermetic of, of, of activities. Or well, this is what is uh, being presented. Um, but he, he turns to painting, and, and again, although here one might uh, look at perhaps the monochromes that uh, you would expect from someone whose um, contemporaries are uh, perhaps working out the monochrome, uh, he, he turns to painting of portraits and, and still lifes, painting as a minor form. Um, and again, uh, you know, if one thinks of Tatlin, you have these paintings, you've, you've got the one painting above his, his deathbed, but then you have these other post the death of painting paintings um, that are returned to representation, uh, which is a kind of a, uh, a, 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 an interesting notion, you know, what, what one is doing now. If, if, if we are, in everything we're doing, uh, entering a kind of a, a sort of a, a a B-side or an end note or, 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 or of art history and paintings art history. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a question. You know, if one looks at the paintings around, around the room, what, what do they have in relationship to a, a, an idea of paintings un, un, unfolding? But anyway, here he is at, at an easel um, uh, painting um, late on in life. Um, but early in, in, his, in his life, the first... Um, uh, commission he had was uh, to design the sarcophagus of Lenin's tomb, uh, which is an extraordinary thing to, to think your, your first artwork or your first public artwork is a kind of a, a work of death. It's a kind of a, a death work, and, and it's a relate. And, and it, he designed again this very esoteric sort of crystalline glass structure that, of course, the regime uh, didn't accept. So it, it ended up being a much more sort of conservative. Uh, solution, but, but it is an extraordinary thing that, that at the very beginning of his architectural practice he, he has a work of death and then he himself suffers a kind of a death as a, as a, as a practitioner and he ends up painting through, through painting's death. It's a kind of um, 
it, it's, it's, a, it's a compelling uh, image. And, and one of the striking things about the house, actually, that doesn't exist anymore, it's been taken away, but he, 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 he constructed these beds of concrete. They're kind of like concrete slabs, mortuary slabs. So within the actual building, there is this relationship of uh, death to sleep to death um, in a kind of a, uh, an image of, of, of Blanchot. So um, how to, uh, one of the problems, again, I, maybe it's, it's difficult, I, um, actually bringing artwork to, again, what I'm doing here, which is giving a kind of a thesis. And, and it's not the way artwork works. And, and suddenly artwork becomes a kind of an illustration of the things that one's talking about, which I, I don't re really want to do. Um, uh, but so anyway, th this is a work that has something to do with what I've just said. But I, you know, how one, how one, <laughs> I, I'm not going to um, use it as an explanation. Uh, um, but there's a relationship to writing, there's a relationship to to all these uh, relationships, to monochromes, to, to sleep, to night. Um, um, uh, moving very quickly forward to a recent, recent show. Um, again, uh, it, 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 this issue of the studio is one that um, is kind of interesting for me. Um, in, in that um, it does bring up another text that was quite important for me. Um, uh, that has continued to be important for me, and I'm still trying to work through it, is um, a chapter in Agamben's um, A Man Without Content, and it's the Poesis Praxis uh, chapter. Uh, and he, he there is talking about a, a relationship between uh, uh, different kinds of attitudes to making um, uh, within a, a space of, could be a studio. I mean, he doesn't actually talk about the space, but I, I'm thinking, you know, what a thought space might be, and, and um, if one does have a relationship to a studio, it might be a, a space of either poesis or praxis or both, or each each person working out a relationship between those things. Um, and uh, um, what he talked about with poesis is it, it's it's you know in a. Agamben is kind of following Heidegger in a kind of an idea of the loss of language and, and, and what happens when the terrible uh, Romans take over from Greek and the Greeks and they lose all the inflections of language. And, and, and he, um, he's talking about how we've lost a sense of poesis, uh, that, that so much of artwork today is an idea of praxis, an idea of the will, of imposing uh, one's thought and one's ideas and one's intention onto a, a work of art. And, and somehow this is expressed through, through labor. And, and again, it's, it, it's, a, it's a kind of a very poignant uh, text in relation to the, to the PhD, when things become over-theorized, when you get a wrong relationship to theory, uh, which is detrimental. And, and uh, there is a sense, I, again, if everyone here is doing research or a PhD, that, that it's not a neutral thing, that one could, um, uh, suggest the PhD doesn't help one uh, uh, in one's relationship to work. It can actually mess one up. 